Welcome to The Extra Shot. My name's Marshall. And I'm Charlie. You can follow the show at Extra Shot LTU on Twitter and Instagram for updates throughout the week and watch us live on upstart.net.au. We have another packed show today. Uh, we have a special guest coming in to discuss Islamic Awareness Week, a fun Would You Rather game, a sport recap and our human of Latrobe. But first, here's Marshall with the news. The United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on the Effects of Climate Change has delivered a grim warning for Australia's Great Barrier Reef. The IPCC's new report said emissions from around the world must reach zero by 2050 to stop the global warming at a 1.5 degree Celsius rate. At the current rate, the IPCC said, uh, said the, the 1.5 Celsius mark would be broken as early as 2040 and the two, two degrees Celsius mark would be broken by 2060. The effects on coral would mean at the effects, uh, the coral will be affected at a 1.5 degree rate by 70 to 90 percent. It will decline by 70 to 90 percent at that rate. Sorry, I apologize. I'll take a second. And if if the rate jumped to two degrees, it would jump. The effect, the coral loss would jump to nine, over 99 percent. I'll repeat that for you. The loss of coral and a two degree rise in temperatures would jump to over 99%, so it'd be very, very disastrous. A drug lab found during a raid on a suburban Adelaide home has been described as one of the biggest discovered in South Australian history. The, ra the raid took place with, on Monday with police seizing 120 kilograms of methamphetamine powder and over 10 kilograms of what police suspect to be crystal methamphetamine or ice, commonly known as. This is from a Morford Vale home, which is a suburb in Adelaide. Two men who were at the home were during the raid were both charged with manufacturing a large commercial quantity of, co control, of a controlled drug. In a statement, South Australian police detective Mark Trenwith said police believe they had cracked a large drug syndicate. And finally, a new Australian Bureau of Statistics chart has shown that Australians are getting more takeaway or are eating out at restaurants more than ever. The chart broke down Australia's spending on different types of food. The data showed that Australians spend 34% of their food budget on eating out or getting takeaway, a big jump from the 24% found from their last study, which took place in 1988. Uh, in second place was uh, meat, and in third place was food and veg, just by the way. Uh, Charlie, the fact that I went out for dinner last night, got a beautiful dinner, and got takeaway coffees this morning, this morning shows that it, it's sort of a proof of that. Why it do you reckon there's been a big jump in this period of time? I think that it's because um, it's just convenient to order things, especially with Uber Eats and Menulog and all these different apps. It's just so easy to order take it, take out food um, as opposed to like getting ready and like getting presentable to go to a restaurant. It's just so much easier to eat at home. Well, the stats included going to a restaurant as well. I'm, I'm trying to get at, is, are people lazier now? Or is, it, is the convenience, is the convenience, <laughs> is the convenience of it take, is it, is it, is it, is it taken over, you know, the, the want to make your own food or to cook? Um, I think it's a little bit of laziness and also a lack of time. I feel like um, in today's society, everyone's busy with, you know, different projects, working, um, a career and all that type of stuff. So I feel like um, it's just easier to order takeout food than it is to cook if you're running out of time during the day. I understand that people are time poor, especially yeah. in 21st century life. Mm -hmm. It's incredibly time poor. And the fact that there's so many more options as opposed to, say, when this last study was out in 1988. That's very true. You probably only had, what, fish and chips, uh, <laughs> yeah. McDonald's, KFC. Yeah, and now, and now you have basically anything you want. Yeah, really, especially in Melbourne in particular oh, and especially. like in all the major cities across Australia, there's any type of cuisine you could think of. What's your favourite takeaway food, by the way? Oh. No, 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 no. I know, I know it's Maccas and stuff like that, but what, quickly, what is your number one favourite? Probably the Indian food. Oh. That's my favourite. You're making me hungry just thinking Anything about spicy. It. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yes. So um, so last week here at Latrobe was Islamic Awareness Week and some people from the Extra Shot went out went down to check it out. This week, La Trobe University's Islamic Society held its first ever Islamic Awareness Week. 
We were personally invited to the society's first ever trivia night. Brothers, my name is Bafiyar, and I welcome you all on the behalf of the Trove University Islamic Society. Uh, thank you very much for all the universities for accepting the invitation and joining us here. Like all good uh, trivia nights, it had its fair share of laughs, confusion, but also controversy. It's a big question. When did Cold War start? To discuss how the Awareness Week went, we have the Latrobe University Islamic Society's President Bakhtian in the studio. Now joining us in the studio is the President of the Latrobe Islamic Society, Bakhtiar Alam. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much for inviting me. So run us through the week itself and what's, what's some of the activities that happened? Uh, basically, it was called it Islamic Awareness Week and it was about uh, how to create uh, presence and uh, awareness about the Muslims on the campus. Uh, among non-Muslims and Muslim people. So it was revolved around uh, five pillars. They are basic pillars of Islam, mm -hmm. uh, starting from prayers, and then shahada is called concept of God, and then uh, fasting, then there is a pilgrimage. You might have known about Hajj. People go in Saudi Arabia, perform that. And fifth is charity, that's called zakat. So each day from Monday to Friday, we covered one pillar, and we talk about that uh, basic concept of that uh, pillar. Mm -hmm. So people get to know what it's about, and. Uh, what what are the dimensions, what are the details of that. Mm -hmm. um, why do you think it's important to have an Islamic society at La Trobe? Uh, the first uh, thing about that, because the population, uh, when there is more population, you have a need to cater that population. And second th thing is that in the contemporary world, we see outside, uh, there are uh, different kinds of topics that coming in kind of in terms of attacking or uh, there are confusions going on, misconception about Islam. So we feel there is a need for every Muslim to tell people what the right story is and what are the misconceptions and to like eliminate them from the core of Islam. Mm -hmm. How important is even just the sense of identity to have sort of the groups of say, say religious identity or even uh, sort of ethnic ident identity? Because there's also like uh, an Indian groups around campus, societies around campus and many different nationalities. How important is, to, is that to have people to have those sort of groups around in case people who have who traveled to over here to study perhaps get lonely or uh, yeah. you, know, uh, you know feeling a bit homesick how important are those uh, it's have? very very important um, in the beginning of this semester we did one survey so we can get the uh, information from the people that what kind of activities we do that especially uh, international students uh, when they come here the muslim students uh, they don't have many uh, places to go and uh, to seek uh, uh, the knowledge of deen uh, the religion. So uh, therefore we feel it's very important uh, to get that kind of exposure and a platform to do those people so they can do in their relative field and even um, in terms of uh, also uh, doing the unity with other groups and other uh, societies as well so we can go together. Mm -hmm. um, so given the climate of Islamophobia in today's society, uh, what do you think the Islamic society is doing to counteract these divisions in society and anxieties around Islam? Uh, there are a couple of things uh, which uh, we tried to did in last semester and will be doing in next uh, semester and next year as well. Uh, the first uh, thing was that uh, to have uh, one solid bond and connection with uh, the people who are not Muslims and uh, to feel them like apart from the religion that we are also people and we have a friendly get together. We can have a friendly chat with that. For that, we, we had uh, one interfaith debate mm -hmm. uh, with one of the Muslim uh, speakers and one of the Christian speakers, uh, Samuel Green, he was here in Latrobe. So they talked about uh, the concept of Trinity uh, because in Islam, there is a concept of Trinity. It, he, it has been mentioned in different terms and also there is in Bible as well. So that was sometimes similar ground. So we found that ground and came together. Mm -hmm. And after that, it was like friendly discussion, uh, how we can go further, what we can do, yeah. like that. So you, you sort of sound like that was a mix, it's a, it's a successful activity of the week. Was, how did you feel about the whole week itself? Did you, did you see it as a success? And uh, yeah, it, 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 was, uh, it was a complete success in our terms because uh, we personally, we didn't expect this much of people coming and asking us. Uh, there was uh, there is a come called dawa. It's called giving invitation towards the uh, religion, and we we had a table entire week uh, in Agora, uh, so people can, people can come and ask questions. And uh, the basic objective was that we'll go to people and tell about that. Mm -hmm. But that was very uh, interesting and fascinating thing that people were coming, 
and they were asking. We had uh, Quran copies in English translations, and people, non-Muslims, atheists, even they were coming and asking that, can we have that copy? Mm -hmm. I will go and read it home. So that that was very good uh, impression from tours. And in the measurement scale, we we realized that that was a success. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for joining. Thank us. you very thank much. You. Have a lovely day. Now, Charlie, I heard that you went out into the Agora to ask some would you rather questions. Yes, I did. So um, the exam timetable here at Latrobe was just released. And so I thought to lighten everyone's spirit and have some fun, I would ask some students in the Agora some would you rather questions. Um, so before we take a look, just remember that you can tweet your reactions to these questions at Extra Shot LTU. So let's take a look. This is Charlie Wright reporting for The Extra Shot and today I'm here in the Agora and we're going to go ask people some would you rather questions. So let's do it. Would you rather have feet that kept growing as you age or hands that kept growing as you age? Hands. Why? I think you'd just trip over a lot if you had gigantic feet. That'd be a bit annoying, especially as your bones get more fragile. Don't want to be tripping over. Probably hands, I think. Um, I think hands because then I won't be able to find shoes. <laughs> And I need my shoes, so hands. <laughs> Would you rather drink a glass of water from the moat or a glass of expired milk? Out of the water. Why? Just because I would want to get sick from the milk. Mm, expired milk because I don't really want whatever's in the moat. <laughs> I don't want any of those um, duck feces, so I'll probably stick with the milk. Two thousand years later. Hmm. Hmm. It's a very tough one. <laughs> one eternity later. I would probably have to. Oh, uh, I don't like milk, so. But, oh, but my water has chlamydia in it, hundred <laughs> percent. So. Chlamydia? Are you sure? Yeah, from the ducks. The ducks at Latrobe have chlamydia. Didn't you know that? Breaking news. Breaking news. Um, I'm going to go with the spoiled milk. Oh, it would be chunky though, but I'll go with it. <laughs> Expired milk. Why? Uh, I don't know, but the moat's pretty gross. <laughs> yep. I think uh, I've drunk uh, expired milk before anyway, like by accident, so I didn't die or anything, so. Great. <laughs> Would you rather swim 300 metres through poo or through water with dead bodies in it? Poo poo. <laughs> I'm not swimming with dead bodies, so it's probably got poo for that anyways. <laughs> Both sound really appealing, but um, I'm going to have to go with the poo. Yeah, dead bodies probably. Can I ask about drugs? No. Would you rather eat poo that tasted like chocolate or chocolate that tasted like poo? Well, I don't know if I can answer that because I don't know what poo tastes like. Well, theoretically it tastes bad. Because it smells bad. Um, well, probably chocolate that tastes like poo, because you'd probably end up getting really sick if you ate poo. These are really weird questions. Um, but I think <laughs> probably chocolate that tastes like poo. Like, how much do I have to eat? Probably just, like, a bite. Uh, a whole block, maybe. Oh, oh, shit. Far out. I don't know. I don't know. Don't touch the mic. Sorry. Mmm... Chocolate that tastes like poo. Being a journalist sucks. It's really hard. No one wants to talk to you. Would you rather fight a hundred duck-sized horses or a hundred horse-sized ducks? The question is you say the small one or one of a big one. Yeah. Oh! Yeah, like I was like, this is easy. Oh. A horse-sized duck. A horse-sized yeah. duck, yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Would you rather fight a hundred duck-sized horses or one horse-sized duck? Uh, come to think of it, a horse-sized duck because it'll be more of a, like a fight. Like it won't be that like sad. Like because if it, if I'm ki if I'm like kicking around like a hundred tiny horses, it's just messy, blood everywhere, terrible. Like. <laughs> You know, like a duck, you, you could like knock it out and you like defeat it, but like, yeah. Would you rather fight a hundred 
duck-sized horses. Is that right? Would you rather fight... <laughs> Wait, <laughs> sorry, I'm laughing. Um, a hundred duck-sized horses. Because horses can't climb. Probably one horse-sized duck. Yeah. Why? I, I don't know, man. Like, could you imagine, like, you just get swamped by horses. Like, that would be... That would be scary. Yeah. Ooh. Well, swans are kind of like ducks, and they're really scary. So maybe maybe the horse-sized ducks. The little ones? You could just kick them or something? Boot them like footies. Yeah. This has been Charlie Wright reporting for the extra shot. Oh, my God. Uh. <laughs> well, um, that was a fun uh, story to make. People had some um, interesting reactions. Um, let's take a look at some people's tweets. I think we got some tweets there. Yes, yes some, I think people are reacting. So, Marshall, I have to ask you, would you rather drink expired milk or water from the moat? I would have a comment that would probably, it, 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 it'd probably pitch it, you know, I re, uh, related to it the most. And that was, I've drank expired milk before. Mm -hmm. Not by choice. That seems to be a common theme. I feel like that's happened to a lot of people. I made the, mistake, made the mistake of buying 10 cent milk from Coles because mm -hmm. it was going off and it went off earlier than I thought it was going to. Mm -hmm. It wasn't nice. And I'm not touching the my water. Well, you have to pick one. I'm going expired milk. Okay. Because I've had it before. Yeah, that's fair. Um, and also, would you rather fight 100 duck-sized horses or 100 horse-sized... Or one horse-sized duck? I messed it up again. Every it's time it's I right, ask someone I've got that, my answer. I, got it I, want, I want to be King Kong. I want to be Godzilla. Mm -hmm. And I want to kick the butt of 100 horse, uh, duck-sized horses. <laughs> I wanted to be like, whoop, like King Kong yeah. like, on the top of the Empire State mm. Building. Well, that's what most people said because it would be easier. Yeah. I As mean, opposed to one one giant I'm a, I am a, I am a millennial, you know. I yeah. want the easy way out always. Of course. Now it's time for sport. Thanks, yeah. mate, Charlie. <laughs> Welcome back. It's time for sport, guys. Now joining us is Billy and Sahail. Welcome. How are we? Well, yeah, we're good. Got a bit of um, order proceedings here. I think we've, uh, we're <laughs> off the rails a little bit, uh, just quietly. So yes. Get, get the, get the, get the, get the, <laughs> Can you translate uh, that for me? I don't know what you mean by off the rails. <laughs> That's um, So the Khabib and McGregor fight happened recently. Give us a rundown of what yeah. happened. Alrighty. So we had... Um, what didn't happen? We had um, Mr. Khabib Nurmagomedov absolutely maul uh, one Conor McGregor. <laughs> And um, yeah, well, um, was this for which title was this? It was for, for the lightweight championship. Um, as it was, um, McGregor had his title stripped because he hadn't competed in over two years, yeah. and then um, you had Khabib who had re who had won it, uh, fresh, fresh winner, he's undisputed. Winner. He's twenty seven and zero now. Twenty seven and zero. That's a like fat and dangerous uh, man. And um, <laughs> not only that, like their number one contender just absolutely got torn to shreds. So. Um, he kind of looks unbeatable at this stage, to be honest with you. Well, like, well, that's the future for Khabib, but let's talk about what happened in the fight because it was eventful, to say the least. It oh was a, yeah, it was, it was a, well, it was a dominant, the fight itself was pretty uneventful, really. Khabib was pretty, uh, he was dominant, um, won with the, the rear naked choke in the fourth round, yeah. winning by submission. But it's what happened afterwards that yeah. um, yes. everyone's talking about and um, was... Is the big Before we the go game. through that, let's let's just discuss the actual fight first. <laughs> because um, I have to bring this up. Everyone said that if Connor can keep it standing, we would see an upset win, which um, Khabib actually stood toe to toe with Connor and knocked him down, which was the only knockdown of the fight. Mm. And to be honest with you, I'm pretty sure that every person that bet against Khabib Nurmagomedov now is eating their own words, to be honest with you. You stand excited for Khabib. I'm you, very excited. Yeah, we know been a fan since supporting on, uh, been, on Been a fan since Sunday. the start, mate, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah. All right, so, so Khabib got the win. He won the championship. Mm -hmm. What happened after the bell? Well, um, all hell broke loose, basically. We saw um, Khabib... Um, Pointed straight out of the cage to one of McGregor's teammates. Uh, jumped Dylan Dennis, over. Yeah. Dylan Dennis jumped 
out of the octagon into the crowd, <laughs> yep. started um, throwing punches there. There was security everywhere. Threw a fly People flying in from a fly everywhere. Kick, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the camera, the camera is following that. And then what we're not seeing as um as people are following the chaos outside, yeah. a couple of Khabib's teammates have jumped inside the octagon, with oh, no. where Conor McGregor yeah. was, and have yep. started. And yep. there's a brawl there. Mm-hmm. Uh, Connor got the first punch in, which yep. we didn't see yeah. at the start. <laughs> and then he copped one from behind and then security got involved there and both fighters had to be escorted out. And it was, it was I mean, absolute chaos. You've made it known that you're a massive Khabib fan, but you can't condone this, can yeah. you? What are your oh, thoughts? look, look, to be honest with you, he even said it himself afterwards, his dad's going to kick his butt because <laughs> he wasn't raised to be like that. I like that. And he's correct. To be honest yeah. with you, what he did w- was... But you got to also take into consideration, not only do you have so much animosity, you've had some guy just absolutely trash you. Yeah, I'll, I'll ask you, Charlie, okay? Yeah. I want to bring you into the conversation. Mm-hmm. Somebody <laughs> absolutely trashes your family, trashes yep. your religion, and you are from another area. Like, you don't understand the way... Um, Folk promotion works. Are we talking correct? about? Are we talking about McGregor and his? Sort yeah. of yes, yes. The, the Pro wrestling style. Yeah. Yeah. As yet, promotion was. Yeah, like no one gets that. It's promotion. Like, yeah. like everyone gets that except Khabib's, Khabib's from Russia. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. He's very. They they take on us. Ser- they take on us seriously. Yeah. Correct. Eastern like European. um, and honestly, to be to be straight, like if you had somebody come up to you and talk to you, everything like that, and not only that, you're full of adrenaline from choking out a guy in an That's arena true. with that many people. Yeah. Let's I would be angry be, too. Yeah, yeah. Have you of got course. A, you got I much think of, everyone would be. I'm you got much sure of a violent streak in you, Charlie? They probably would, yeah. You got much of a violent streak in you, Charlie? Do you think um, you'd be... Like you oh, yeah. Yeah. Jump, cross me. Jump, yeah. <laughs> you, do you, much, do you know cage? much Muay Thai? Or no, I wish. I need to learn some. I know some Pad Thai. That's nice. Pad Thai. Oh, oh that was terrible. What? End that there. But So what happens next? All that drama, like what... Uh, McGregor was the number one contender. Does he drop down after we had the the yeah. lightweight fight beforehand as well? Uh, let's be honest here. Yeah, yeah uh, McGregor has the um. Let's let's just say he has the backing of being able to say that he is the major draw card in the UFC. He, he is. He's the golden boy. Okay. So whatever he says, often goes. Mm-hmm. But in this case, Khabib has everything in his sight. Not only did you beat him like decisively, now you've got the title. Mm-hmm. Now, if you wanna, if you wanna dictate terms, you can dictate terms because anything, anything that he, uh, anything that goes against Khabib now, is I'm telling you, like everybody's gonna say, like he, he has no reason to dictate terms. Like, let's be honest, McGregor shouldn't even open his mouth after this getting absolutely mauled like that. He he shouldn't. Humbled. I love how hated you are. Shouldn't, yeah, but Willie. So finish it up in, let's say in five words or less. Who's Khabib's next fight for the title for? Who against and where? Tony Ferguson, and it's going to be in Russia. There you go. I think the next one will be against McGregor. Not that I think it should be necessarily, yeah. but I think the way the it's game all is. About the money. It's money exactly talking. Right. It's all about the money. Money talking. Exactly right. <laughs> yes. Um. Thanks for joining us, boys. No Thank problem. Uh, now it is time for Humans of Latrobe. Now joining us is the president of the Look Into African Society here at Latrobe, Chetna. Welcome. And your last name is? It's Razuni. Razuni. Yes. Yeah. I was going to say Rose, but that's not right. Yeah, no, it's yeah, just yeah. another name. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about Alias and the types of events that they run? Okay. Um, so a Look Into African Society is basically a society where we join together with African students mm-hmm. on campus, um, but it's not um, specifically African. So anybody is welcome to join to share the love for our culture, our tradition, our food. And um, that's really important to us to spread the message. Um, we create events such as like country night. So recently we had Tanzania Mm -hmm. night. Um, we had Tanzanian food. We had the girls who are Tanzanian present for their country. So we got to talk about, um, the people, um, itself and their experiences being a Tanzanian. 
Um, other events we have is just like de-stress events where we just chill out some African music, have pizza and just relax. Um, but yeah, that's the type of events we mm. host. You're the president of Alas, uh, Alias? Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh, uh, tell us a little about the history of it, how long it's been running and when did you get involved? Yeah, um, so it's been running for three years now. The uh, first president was Amanda and she was the one that said, well, there's no African society, this needs to be done because mm. there were a, um, a lot, uh, a bigger population of Africans coming onto campus. So that was really important for her and she built her community from there. Mm -hmm. um, and she built it off trying to get the uh, message out that we are here and we can have a family as well. So mm. we're not feeling alone. Um, uh, the other thing was that we wanted mainly like to reach out to others on campus, not just Africans. Mm -hmm. So it was like whoever wanted to be um, involved were able to participate. Mm. Yeah. Absolutely. Do do you, do you enjoy introducing people to new cultures, especially there's a lot of Africa. Look, Africa, Africa got a huge amount of countries in it. Yeah. yeah. Different cultures within. Yeah. How do you like showing people these new cultures? Yeah, definitely. Well, to? um, for example, I'm from Mauritius. I'm a very small population at La Trobe, so when we find each other, it's a connection that you don't find anywhere. Yeah. Um, so when I get to share that with people, share my love for my country, share my passion for my food, my culture, my people, it's kind of empowering knowing that I can um, be able to speak up for my country as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, so tell us a little bit about what you're studying and how you balance your study with Alias and, and all the different events that you're on. Yeah, so I'm studying a Bachelor of Arts in Media Studies, um, but it's really difficult to actually <laughs> yeah. balance filmmaking and Can doing imagine. all we're, those we're doing things. Media as yeah, well. yeah. I understand uh, that. yeah, exactly. So you're constantly doing a project and mm -hmm. you're constantly trying to do that, and then at night have time for like at least five hours to go do your event. Mm -hmm. um, so it is really difficult, and I would say semester one was when I tend to do most of my events, not because it, the study load is less, but because I can get everything over and done with. Mm -hmm. And you have um, that sort of new, new, yeah. new year enthusiasm, yeah. which maybe you don't yeah. have sort of halfway yeah. through. Exactly. Semester yeah. two and um, the funding is really difficult mm -hmm. as well. So um, semester one, we have Africa Day, which is our biggest uh, social event. We mm -hmm. have it in the Agora. We have music. We have food. All this funding basically goes towards semester one. So... Um, I guess like trying to balance my life at that time during Africa Day was extremely difficult. Um, in uh, past year, so a year ago, I actually went part time because oh, wow. I couldn't handle the stress. I was just like, this is just too much. I need okay. to take this part time. And I feel like a lot of uh, club communities feel the same. Yeah. Um, but this year I went full time. So I focused myself in semester one mainly. And then semester two, I just went along with it. So have you found the full time, are you managing it a lot better? Um, yeah, well, we decreased the amount of events we have, um, but we mainly made it bigger. So yeah, that mm -hmm. meant that I, I could focus on it here and there, but it was a big, it was towards a bigger event. So that was easier. Yeah. Well, both are big commitments, so yeah. that makes sense. But clearly you find it rewarding. So uh, what are the types of uh, different things that you've learned being the president of the alias? Yeah, so uh, it is really rewarding. Um, I love the fact that I can um, be in a leadership role. Mm -hmm. I feel like, especially in high school, um, I didn't have that opportunity at all. So when I got into a leadership ro role, I was um, responsible for a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And I learned um, to speak up, you know, so for oral presentations, I'm really comfortable doing so, which I never did before. Mm -hmm. So I learned skills that were um, important for my communication. Yep. And um, I learned skills um, in terms of like working with the community because you're working alongside others, not just yourself yeah. Yeah, in the awesome. club. Well, thank yeah. you very much for coming thank in. Thank you. No worries. Yeah. And uh, we wish you a lovely day. Thank yes. you. <laughs> now, before we wrap up the show, Charlie, I want to apologise to the viewers for my voice. I had a rather rowdy weekend at the <laughs> WWE, which came to the Melbourne Cricket Ground. Uh -huh. uh, but next yep. week, I promise my voice will be back to normal. Yes. Uh, remember to follow us on Instagram and Twitter at ExtraShotLTU. And we will see you next week. Bye.